Hello everyone, welcome to Salesforce Atlas. My name is Zerisa. If you're new to the channel, it's really great to be back and it's really great to see you back in my channel. Um, you will see over the summer that I will have maybe some bigger breaks between my videos. I'm uh, moving around the places uh, but anyways i'm really glad to do some more content and i'm ready for that and uh, in today's episode i would like to discuss with you validation rules and i'm not going to build anything in today's episode but there are some things um, many of you are using validation rules and and uh, perhaps some of you are new to salesforce um, ecosystem and are also new to using formulas and building validation rules in Salesforce. And what exactly are validation rules? As you know, validation rules are perfect for, um, for, for adding some barrier to wrong data or invalid data entry. So from stopping you entering, entering data and later doing a huge mass um, data cleansing, you can restrict values that are being entered into your system and give some advice to your users. Let's say if you're creating error messages, give advice what exactly went wrong and what should they improve? Maybe what other fields should they fill out before saving the record or before or making any changes to the record they're working on. And uh, there are some very interesting resources on Salesforce that I'm going to share with you about validation rules, tips, um, and tricks as well, which you should consider before creating validation rules, such as uh, thinking if uh, you are cross-referencing and using formulas in your validation rules, you have to make sure that those other cross-reference objects have been deployed in your production org or wherever you're using these validation rules. You have to think about other things, make sure that this validation rule is not, isn't going to affect any other processes in your system because if a poorly managed system, if a poorly created validation rule is active, it can also stop or prevent uh, your users for, from saving and creating valid information and valid data in your org. So you have to keep an eye on that and definitely test it and even make sure that some users test it um, before you fully go on and, and uh, start using this validation rule. And uh, as well, I have actually here prepared some interesting, um, some interesting tips about error messages. If you are creating your error messages, very simple, just by saying that this is incorrect, it is not going to really tell your users what are the, what are they expected to change or what exactly went wrong, especially if your error message is at the very top of the page, as you can't really always um select it and just leave it around the field especially if, you, if you're using a lot of various fields in your formulas you have to give some instructions and um, just be more specific about error messages give your users plenty of information because it will also save you time it will save their time and they, they will not have to reach out to you for any additional support and um, always include maybe some field labels if the error message is at the very top. Perhaps you want to be clear what which fields aren't working out and uh, give them a, a field label um, where they should focus and make these changes or improvements. And uh, some other things as well that are going with the multilingual organizations. If you can, or if you have to, then try to translate your error message. Uh, I know that uh, there are Salesforce customers across the world and not everyone is using Salesforce in um, an English language. There are various other languages. And uh, if you have teams all over the world, maybe you can also use some translations, uh, at least some short uh, messages that would help your users if uh, they're using any other language. Yeah, so these are actually the tips that I would like to share with you. And I'm going to share the link to Salesforce help page below, down below in the comment section. And uh, if I go to Salesforce setup, as you know, if you are trying to prevent some wrong data from being entered into your system and saved in the record, you're usually looking at the, at the specific objects and you can only create these validation rules at the object level. If I go to my object manager and I open accounts, then in, in the accounts page, we have 
validation rules section. And with validation rules, there are various types of validation rules. If I select new, uh, you're going to see how you're creating these validation rules. I have covered some of this in my previous videos where I'm actually creating validation rules. Um, I'm not going to create any rules uh, in this video. I just wanted to share um, a little bit information and explain about validation rules and also share with tips for writing validation rules, especially if you're new to Salesforce ecosystem. And uh, the rule names, usually you have to save them uh, with as an API name. As you can see here, I have, let's say, international uh, phone number validation without any spaces. That's an important thing. And then you don't have to activate it since the very beginning, but you can activate it later once you're, once you're certain that this validation rule works for you, for your org, and it's not creating any disruptions in your system and then your, your users can, can do their work. You can also write the description. This description is mainly for you or any other Salesforce administrators or developers who are going to join the company. Let's say you're leaving. And uh, if you want to make sure that your Salesforce platform is uh, easy to use for any for your next um, future colleagues or people who will join after you, this description is going to help them and not the users. This is just for the back end. And here, this is where we are creating the actual validation rule formula where we're, let's say we have this example, discount percent is greater than 30. So we have, uh, yes, discount percent is more than 30%. And there are various examples. You can follow the link and maybe I'm going to share this as well with various um, uh, error condition formula examples. This is very useful. And, um, Whenever you are creating a formula and you're thinking about fields and you're thinking if it's not going to affect anything else in your system, you can also you can also check the syntax with this little button. It is going to confirm that your validation rule has no errors and that usually it just turns green. And then you can go to your um, sales cloud, service cloud to the, the front end and uh, you can actually uh, go and test it on an actual record. And um, if it does show you an error, just read the error. Usually it shows in the red letters here, it shows what the error is. And you can learn from that. Either there is a missing parenthesis or maybe uh, picklist values should be written in a different formatting. Maybe you can't reference them. Uh, there are always some little things that you might need to tweak. And there's a lot of helpful resources online, as well as on Salesforce community. You can find various examples where people reach out and they get answers and you don't even have to wait and wait for any, you don't have to go ask and wait for any, uh, any answers because it might be already there. And uh, the error message part, which is also very, very important. Uh, that's the part your users see when the um, error message or your formula equals true. Your formula in this box should, um, should turn a true value. As here it says, if this formula expression is true, display the text defined in the error message. Now, when it actually errors and it basically flags, it shows your user, stop creating this record, there is something missing or something is wrong. And in this error message, it is the best way to write very specifically what is wrong so you don't waste, you don't lose any time, they don't lose any time, they don't have to reach out to you. They can read the error message and it explains them what they need to improve or maybe what is missing on the record before saving this, uh, these changes. And you can also decide where to keep the error message location, either at the top of the page or around the field that you can choose. It is not always possible. Most of the time you can. However, if it's if you can't save it around a specific field and you have to leave it at the top of the page, then definitely make sure that your error message is clear. It's very clear and easy to read and understandable to everyone. So you can double check with other your other users and uh, see if uh, they're happy with their message and if everything makes sense. And then you just save it. Then if you haven't activated, then make sure that you have activated it and that it is valid. And uh, there is another trick that later in the future, if you need to mass update any 
uh, any records and it is possible maybe that your data loader is uh, triggering errors. It is just showing that there is a validation rule and it is unable to update some records without um, completing some other fields. If that's the case and if this field is not so essential, you can also deactivate your rule, update records with your data loader and then activate the rule bag. This is one of the tricks that I sometimes use and it is very useful if uh, you need to do a mass update. But this is it about some validation rule basics and I'm going to share these tips for writing validation rules. You will see here at the very bottom as well some interesting some interesting bullet points well i hope that this video made sense i know i didn't create anything in the video but i really wanted to share some content and uh, talk about salesforce i'm going to in the future videos i'm going to build something and um or either i will be talking about reports or something else in more detail and uh, i really hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a great day everyone and i'll see you next time Bye bye